Hello and welcome back to another Rush Duel Links deck profile. Today we're taking another look at Ancient Forces and the reason for that being that Clear Ice Dragon has just come off of the ban list. This was at limit 3 which made it very difficult to play alongside Multistrike Dragon Dragius and Phoenix Dragon but now it has been released and it's a great thing that it has because this deck is actually a lot of fun and is decently strong which means Having this card free means it now potentially could rise up in meta. Now, do I think this is going to suddenly be a top tier deck? Probably not, but whenever a deck is allowed to be at full power whilst being able to play Dragius in it, that's always a little bit scary. So first things first, let's take a look at the skill, Ancient Forces. So this skill can be used if the only monsters with 1400 or more attack in your deck are dragon type monsters. So that means we won't be able to use things like Kanan if we want to include the Aqua Engine. Requirement none. One face up level 6 fire or water attribute dragon type effect monster on your field gains a thousand attack until the end of this turn. Then you can send one level 6 water or fire attribute dragon monster from your deck to the graveyard. So naturally we're supposed to use this with either our burning blaze dragon or our clear ice dragon. Potentially we can send one of the other ones to the graveyard to set up a nice ancient arise dragon play. But basically this lets us get a 2600 attacker or a 2800 attacker which is very good now if the barrier was still kind of in the meta and we're seeing a lot of play this would oftentimes be the main counter to this just because 26 and 28 is not enough to attack over a barrier protected 2500 attacker such as dragius so in that regard it would be kind of detrimental but because the barrier isn't seeing a ton of play right now both of these guys are basically free to get their little boost and then attack in and get in for some decent damage now, they are both level 6, which does mean we can run into kind of a bricking problem, which does come up occasionally. Because we're only playing 3 level 7 monsters, but we are playing 4 level 6 monsters, we're playing a total of 7 high level monsters, which isn't too much, but we do sometimes brick on it, which is why we've included 2 engines in here. If we go through the card by card, we'll start off with the Ancient Arise Dragon. 2400 attack, 1600 defense. Now 1600 defense is relevant because it means you can't get popped by your opponent's Ancient Arise Dragon, which is notable. 2400 attack is a little bit low, obviously we'd rather this for 2500, but it can go up to 3000, which is very strong. So we can send the top card of that to the graveyard, which again, potentially we could mill one of our Burning Blaze or Clear Ice to fuel its own effect, but also milling is generally quite good because we have a lot of cards in here that want to be in the graveyard. This card gains 600 attack to the end of this turn. So 600 puts up to 3000, again, very relevant number. 3000 means if we attack into, for example, a Harpy Lady Sisters and they have a Counter Pigeons face down, we would lose 700, putting us down to 23, which is still bigger than that 21, which means we can attack over it. That is probably the most relevant use for this specific attack stat, but also it can attack over just about anything. And very few things will survive being hit. The only thing I can think of that might be seeing some play would be Trigger Drago protected by Thunder Spark, because Thunder Spark does make your monster lose 500 attack. So Trigger Drago 2500, losing 500 off our 3000 means we would become 25 and we would crash into it. But other than that, Ancient Arise should be big enough to attack over just about anything. On top of the fact it has another effect which never really came up in the TCG. And that is, if you have a clear Ice Dragon and Burning Blaze Dragon in your graveyard, you can also shuffle both into the deck. And if you do, you can destroy one face at monster with 1500 or less defense on your opponent's field, which is really good. Being able to pop a monster is fantastic. Being able to pop your opponent's Dragius or other, other boss monster they might have, as long as it has 1500 or less defense, is huge. But almost more importantly sometimes, this lets us recycle our level 6 monsters, which is very important. One of the best things this deck can do is just keep shuffling everything back into the deck again and again and again to be able to reuse it later. So very, very good card. We would fit more in here if we could, but this deck already has a lot of high level monsters, so we really don't want to go overboard. And Multi-Strike Dragon Dragius is still very, very important. Again, still one of the best standalone cards in the game. So the top card of it to the graveyard, this turn, if this card destroyed a monster by battle, it can make a second attack during that battle phase. Now, why is this so important in this deck? For the same reason it's important in most decks, because this is the best way to get to our opponent's life points. This deck lacks ways to deal with your opponent's defense position monsters. We don't have any piercing. The only form of pop that we have in the deck is going to be the Ancient Arise Dragon, which can only pop face up monsters. So if opponent sets three, we can't get to their life points that way. So Dragius is the best way for us to get at our opponent's life points. We don't want to be in a situation where we just have three monsters in attack mode and we can't actually get any damage in and we have to just wait for our opponent to slowly draw into and out or hope they run out of normal summon monsters so that we can get to them that way. The Dragius is always going to be very important for that reason. 
Next up, we have Seahorse Carrier. So this is a recent inclusion into the deck, and that is just because the main source of us losing with this deck is bricking on high-level monsters. So we've tried it with six, as in taking out one of the Dragius, and when doing that, it felt like we never found enough boss monsters. So what we've instead done is we've put in a second engine, because we've always had the Beast engine in here, but we've now included the Aqua engine, and the goal behind that is that even if we do see a lot of our high-level monsters, we can just summon them all out together, which has been working a decent amount. The Seahorse Carrier is basically in here just to get back the Grace Princess Kana and then be tributed off to get out our boss monsters. The reason we're on Kana is twofold. One, it's pretty good at protecting us in some situations against Hell Tuning Invasion and Heavy Metal. That's just because it's level two with low attack value. But because we are playing level sixes, when these monsters level does get reduced by Hell Tuning Invasion, they do become two, which means they can still pop them over the Kana. But we can't play Kanan anyway, just because of our skill. Restriction saying we can't play 1400 or more attack that aren't dragons. Next up, we have Phoenix Dragon. And again, when we were swapping around the Dragus, we were playing two Phoenix Dragon. But I think Dragius feels so important to get to our opponent's life points that's why we decided to double up on it, but we could just as easily put in a second copy of Ancient Arise Dragon, drop one Dragius, and include one more Phoenix Dragon, if that feels more comfortable for you. The Phoenix Dragon is extremely powerful. We can use it to bring back Multi-Strike Dragon Dragius, Ancient Arise Dragon, or either our Clear Ice or Burning Blaze. So there are four different targets in this deck that we can bring back with it, which is very, very good. That means we can filter and get exactly what we're looking for. If, for example, we need to get extra cards in the graveyard to fulfill, for example, a Talisman Accelerate, we could bring back like a Clear Ice Dragon, use our skill, dump a Burning Blaze, then tribute over Clear Ice to get it back into the graveyard and also get an extra card in the graveyard like that. But primarily the way that we use this is to typically bring back Ancient Arise to get its effect off and then just have a big attacker or to bring back Ultra Strike Dragon Dragius, which is really good. On top of the fact that this is a level two dragon, which means we can shuffle it back into our deck using Clear Ice Dragon's effect, which again, a sub-theme of the deck is just keep recycling, 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 and keep reusing everything again and again and again. So Clear Rice lets us place one level 5 or lower Dragon-type monster from our graveyard at the bottom of our deck to shuffle two monsters from your opponent's graveyard into the deck, so we can just keep putting Phoenix Dragon back into our deck using this effect. Next up, Rising Light Angel Essel. Now, this card is an awkward inclusion. So first off, milling is generally really good. We want to be filling our graveyard as much as we can, then we can toolbox it and put stuff back into our deck that we see fit. But... A lot of the monsters that we'll be able to summon off this are going to be level 6s, which aren't as high impact. But if we do manage to summon Dragius, that is kind of the highest value we can get. So Essel sometimes feels very, very good in this deck and sometimes feels a bit mediocre. But overall, I'd rather have this than not have it. Just getting the plus is decent, just milling is decent. But if we do high roll with it, it is extremely powerful. So Essel still a fantastic card. Burning Blaze's effect is never going to come up, but it does notably have zero defense points which does kind of suck sometimes, especially into something like Shield and Sword. But that extra 200 attack sometimes does come up, so it's still worth summoning occasionally. And then Clear Ice Dragon has a pretty good defensive stat in the 16. And again, 26 versus 28 is not a huge difference. So it doesn't really make a huge difference at which one we summon, except exactly when attacking into a Harpy Lady Sisters, because again, Counter Pigeons, Clear Ice will drop down to 2,000 and die, whereas Burning Blaze will drop down to 22 and survive and kill the Harpy Sisters. But the effect of Clear Ice Dragon does actually come up quite a lot. Being able to shuffle up to two monsters from your opponent's graveyard into the deck can be very, very good against a lot of decks. If your opponent's on the Aqua Engine, we can shuffle back their normal Aquas. If your opponent's on the Beast Engine, we can shuffle back their Beasts. If your opponent is even on this deck, we can shuffle back their Burning Blaze and Clear Ice Dragons. If your opponent is on... Just so many decks currently just rely on the graveyard and being able to mess with their graveyard is just very, very strong. If your opponent, for example, even is even playing Phoenix Dragon, we can shuffle back the high levels, which is a bit risky because they could also just draw into them, but still does come up. Also, we can try and keep them under four monsters for Talisman Accelerate. There's just so much that Clear Ice Dragon does right now and is kind of the MVP of the deck, and that makes us even happy that it's no longer restricted. Next up, we have Silver Wolf. Silver Wolf is an interesting one. Its effect is okay, it doesn't cost us anything, it just costs the top card of our deck, which again we're quite happy to mill. And reducing your opponent's monsters attack and defense by 200 can come up, especially the defense that does come up occasionally. But 200 is still quite a small number, so it does feel a little bit lackluster. Then we have Paku Paku Chu, which is the main kind of card for the beast engine. It's really, really good just to be able to get, again, a body back. And it does, again, recycle, which again is this extra little theme of the deck. 
being able to get back our Silver Wolf or other copies of Paki Pakachu can be really, really helpful. Then we've got the three Princess Kana, which we've already spoken about a little bit, and then the All Seeing White Tiger, which is just the best beast we can play because we can't play Gazelle because of our skill. Next up, we have two copies of Dragon's Inferno. Now, these cards are again a new inclusion. We decided to put them in because we were originally playing the Guard, but we've decided against using the Guard because the Guard is specifically in here as a tech to deal with tournament players. If we're expecting to run into a lot of Hell Tuning Invasion, or if we're planning to experience a lot of Dragius, so for example, if we're playing against a lot of aggro players, a lot of those decks will be attacking you directly quite a lot. So the guard feels stronger in those environments. But on ladder, we kept finding that we were mainly running into like Harpy and Thunder players, and the guard is a lot weaker into them because they don't direct attack as much. They like to change the monsters to attack position or pierce over them. So the guard is kind of a meta call, but as is, we're playing Dragon's Inferno, just to be able to get rid of your opponent's widespread, because that seems to be the main issue, because fundamentally this deck plays like an aggro deck. We just want to have three big guys in attack mode, have them all just keep attacking, 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 and try and get as much damage in as possible. So being able to stop your opponent from having cards that stop us from doing that is very, very important, which is why we've got the Inferno. Next up, Shield and Sword. Again, it's an aggro list. Shield and Sword is a great way to try and close out games. A lot of boss monsters have zero defense, so being able to just get in for effectively direct attacks whilst also dealing with your opponent's threats is extremely important. So again, Shield and Sword, absolutely fantastic and can be a game ender. Then Talismanic Seal Array, in a lot of ways, can feel very similar to Shield and Sword. It weakens your opponent's monster and lets you get over them. This is also the only actual consistent out we have to maximums. So that, I would say, is the main weakness of this build of the deck, is just we will oftentimes struggle to actually deal with an established max, but you shouldn't come up against that too often, so it shouldn't matter. But what you can do is include a second copy of Talismanic Seal Array. If you don't want to include Shield and Sword, you could also include something like Offerings to the Doomed, which is another good way to deal with the maximums. Next up, we have Widespread Ruin. And again, this card needs no introduction. It is absolutely incredible. It's just fantastic. Being able to destroy your opponent's monsters is just always going to be extremely impactful. And turn one widespread seems to be the main cause of my own personal suffering. But this is the deck. Overall, I think this deck's pretty strong. So there have been a couple of tournaments that have been using the new ban list already ahead of time. And I have played this deck in two of them. In one of them, I came second place. And we only lost to a Royal Rebel player who managed to draw basically perfect every single turn. And before that, we had beaten four other Royal Rebel players. And the other tournament, we dropped out because we bricked, and I mean hard bricked, unplayable hands two games in a row, which did lead us to losing the game. Which is another reason why we've decided to include the Seahorse Carrier, because when we have often seen hands of just a big pile of high level monsters and we're just unable to play the game, it doesn't feel great. And losing just because of a hard brick never feels super good which is why we tried to kind of balance out the number of normal summons that we can draw during the duel but overall any deck that can comfortably run dragus is always going to be strong even if you think about this as kind of a kind of slightly off aggro deck it still does work quite well like that we play it like an aggro deck and it does have a lot of the strength that aggro decks do have except we do get the addition of using our skill which is still very powerful Overall, I'd say this deck actually has quite a few good matchups as well. The Royal Rebel matchup isn't too bad for this deck, as long as your opponent doesn't really high roll you and get exactly what they need with like additional buyers to get in that extra 1200 and chip you down a lot quicker. I would say this deck's probably worst matchup in my experience has been Seven's Axel Road, and that is just because that deck can punch you just as hard as you can punch them. So it comes down to who gets the aggro in first, which can feel a little bit awkward because they're able to build a board a little bit easier than you are. But that's enough chit chat. Let's find some replays so I can show what I've been talking about.
Get it! 